Today we'll look at how to manage visibility using layers. We have a number of options for managing visibility in SimCenter 3D. Show and hide is great in that it's easy and you can show and hide objects by type such as solids or sketches but if you have a complex set of objects that you would like to show and hide that can be tedious. Groups are another way to manage visibility. Groups are unique in that a single object can be in more than one group. You can show and hide the groups from the navigator. Layers are the best way to manage the visibility of complex sets of objects. Layers are different from groups in that a single object can only be on one layer. You can easily move objects from one layer to another. New objects are added to the work layer. Investing in the few clicks to set up the layers pays off by easily being able to control the visibility of complex sets of objects. Let's look at how we can use layers to control the visibility of our objects in our simulation files. Here we're starting from a bracket CAD file and we're creating our simulation files. We'll begin in the idealized part where we want to create a mid-surface. In order to do that we need an associative copy of the geometry. I'm going to put that on layer 11. That'll be our work layer. Then we'll wave link the body for the bracket and that will be on layer 11. Here we can isolate just that wave linked body that we want to mid-surface. Now before we mid-surface it, we want the mid-surface to be on layer 12, so we'll make that our work layer. And then we'll mid-surface. Alright, now that we have our mid-surface, we can go to the FEM. And here you can see the layer visibility is independent for each of the simulation files that we've got here. So here we can make our work layer, layer 12, which has the mid-surface, and turn off the other layers. Then we can stitch and shell mesh. Alright, so our mesh is also on layer 12. Our mid-surface and our mesh. Next we'll go to the sim and here we'll create some loads and constraints but first we'll also make sure that we set our work layer where we want to put our constraints so we'll independently control the visibility or be able to of the constraints by putting it on its own work layer 13. Here we also have layer 12 visible so that we can select the objects that we'd like to constrain And we'll also put a load up on the small hole here. So now that we have that on its own layer, we can independently control the visibility of those constraints and loads as well. Alright, now let's say later on you decide that you don't want your mid-surface to be on layer 11 we want to put it on layer 22 instead. We can easily move the mid-surface to layer 22. However, if we go to the FEM, what you'll notice is that the change has not yet been reflected. The mid-surface is still on layer 12. In order to bring that layer change forward, we need to do a recreate and update on those objects, on those mid-surfaces and then we'll see that our mid-surface now is on layer 22. Alright, and that change also carries forward to the sim as well, where we can independently control the visibility of the constraints, the mesh, and the mid-surface.